So let us say you are moving in a car and your position time graph looks something like this. That is, you're starting at position x0 at time t equal to 0. Then the corresponding velocity time graph could be made by taking slope of the curve at various times from this graph and plotting them down here. As an example, instantaneous velocity of the car at this point is the value of slope of the tangent at this point, which can be plotted here. Then at another time, the slope of the curve you can see has increased and therefore we can say the velocity at this point has also increased and we can again plot it down here and so on. So once we plot all the possible slopes along this curve, what we get is the velocity time graph. And this graph shows that you have a certain velocity at time t equal to zero and the velocity is increasing in a linear fashion. And since this is a straight line, you know that acceleration would be constant. So in most numerical problems you get, acceleration will be a constant and there are two basic equations which can be used to solve all the numerical problems. And the first basic equation that connects velocity, acceleration and time of motion is v is equal to v0 plus a t, where v0 is the initial velocity, a is the acceleration which is a constant and does not change with time and v is the final velocity after time t. So let us do a quick derivation of this equation. Now since we are taking acceleration as a constant, we can say that instantaneous acceleration at any point of time is same as the average acceleration. So we can take any two points on this graph. Uh, let us take t equal to zero and v equal to v naught as one point and some other velocity v at some later time t as another point. Then we can write a average is equal to a is equal to v minus v naught upon t minus 0 and we can rewrite this equation as v is equal to v naught plus a t. So you can see that this is equation of a straight line that you probably learned in class 8 and that is y is equal to mx plus c where m is the slope of the line and c is the y-intercept or the place where the line cuts the y-axis. And if you compare this with this equation, the y-intercept here is the initial velocity v0 at time t equal to zero, and the slope of the line gives the acceleration a. As an example, if you have a graph like this, you can immediately say that the initial velocity is two meters per second, and acceleration a is 1.7 meters per second square. Therefore, the equation of motion can be written as v is equal to two plus 1.7 t. You could also do some checks on this equation by say putting time t equal to zero and finding that velocity v is equal to v naught, which is true because at time t equal to zero, velocity is v naught. Another thing you can do is take the derivative of velocity v with respect to time and what we get is dv upon dt is equal to a, which is also true. So our second basic equation is x minus x naught is equal to v naught t plus half a t square, where x naught is the initial position at time t equal to zero, v naught is the initial velocity at time t equal to zero, and a is the acceleration. So let us go ahead and do a derivation of this equation, which will bring a lot more clarity around how you should use this equation. So we know that v average is equal to x minus x naught upon t minus zero, or x is equal to x naught plus v average times t, where v average is average velocity during time t equal to zero and a later time t. Now for linear functions to find the average between any two points, you just need to take the sum of the values at the two points and divide by two. So to find average velocity between time t equal to zero, when velocity is v naught and some later time t, 
when velocity is v is v average is equal to v naught plus v upon 2 and if we use the equation derived earlier that is v is equal to v naught plus a t and substitute v in equation b what we get is v average is equal to v naught plus half a t and substituting this in equation a what we get is x minus x naught is equal to v naught t plus half a t square and to check this equation you can put t equal to 0 and what you'll find is x is equal to x naught which is true you could also take the derivative of x with respect to t and what you'll get is dx upon dt is equal to v naught plus a t or v is equal to v naught plus a t which is also true now these two equations can be used to solve any kinematic problem where acceleration is constant but we can write three more equations from these two equations which can help us solve problems a lot faster or be used in specific situations and this would particularly help you when you are appearing for a competitive exam where time is limited so the third equation is v square is equal to v naught square plus 2a times x minus x naught and this equation can be useful when time t is not known the fourth equation is x minus x naught is equal to half into v naught plus v times t and this equation can be used when a is not known and the fifth equation is x minus x naught is equal to vt minus half a t square which is useful if v naught is not known and in both fourth and fifth equation you should notice that x minus x naught is displacement of the object in time t so these two equations can also help you to find displacement one more important equation i would like you to remember is the displacement in nth second of uniformly accelerated motion and is given as sn is equal to v naught plus a by 2 times 2n minus 1 and we will do a problem in another video to explore this particular equation a lot better so here is the summary of all five equations and my suggestion is once you have understood the derivation of the first two equations just memorize all five equations to speed up problem solving you may find it a little difficult to do at first that is memorizing these equations but take it from me once you memorize them you will be able to crack problems really really fast so do memorize these equations so let's go ahead and immerse ourselves in these equations by cracking a few problems so what you have here is a car that starts from rest and accelerates at 2 meters per second square in a straight line until it reaches a speed of 20 meters per second after this the vehicle starts slowing down at a constant rate of 1 meters per second square until it comes to a stop so the first question is how much time does it take from start to stop the second question is how far the vehicle travels from start to stop so how we will approach this problem is that we will separate the motion of the vehicle in two parts and also assume that the vehicle is moving in the plus x direction in first part we see the vehicle accelerates from rest to its stop velocity of 20 meters per second and the acceleration in this period is 2 meters per second squared and in the second part the vehicle's velocity reduces from 20 meters per second to 0 meters per second and the acceleration is minus 1 meters per second squared and we've taken a negative sign here because you must remember and also think that since the velocity is reducing the acceleration must act in a direction opposite to motion to enable the slowdown of the vehicle and since the motion is in the plus x direction the acceleration must be in the 
minus x direction and therefore the negative sign here. Okay, so to find the time for the entire journey, we can use the equation v is equal to v naught plus a t for each part of the journey because we know the final velocity, we know the initial velocity, we know the acceleration, so this equation can very easily give us the time taken. Okay, for part one of the journey, what we get is final velocity is 20 meters per second, which is equal to initial velocity of 0 meters per second plus 2t. That gives us time taken as 10 seconds. For part two of the journey, final velocity of 0 meters per second is equal to initial velocity of 20 meters per second plus minus 1 times t. That gives us time taken as 20 seconds. So the total time taken is 30 seconds. For the second question, to find the total distance covered, we can use the equation v square is equal to v naught square plus 2a times x minus x naught for each part of the journey again. So for part one of the journey, 20 square is equal to 0 square plus 2 times 2 into x minus 0 or x is equal to 100 meters. And in second part of the journey, 0 square is equal to 20 square plus 2 times minus 1 into x minus 100 or x is equal to 300 meters. Now you have to remember that in the second part of the journey, the initial position or x naught becomes 100 meters and therefore the final position is x is equal to 300 meters or the total displacement is 300 meters. And you would have noticed that this equation was not one of the two basic equations, but we could use it quickly to solve the problem. So again, it is very important for you to remember all five equations if you want to solve your problems with speed. Okay, let us try to solve another problem. And what we have here is that a car on a dry road can break with a constant deceleration of 4.92 meters per second square. So the question is one, how long does a car take to stop if the initial velocity is 24.6 meters per second? And the second question is how far it travels in this time? So we will take the direction of motion as plus x and this can be a general assumption that is the direction of motion as plus x unless the problem specifies a certain direction. So here v naught is plus 24.6 meters per second and acceleration is minus 4.92 meters per second square and you must notice that in the problem they have used the word deceleration which basically tells us that the velocity is reducing. Now, for the velocity to reduce, the acceleration must act in the opposite direction, that is opposite to velocity, and that is why I have taken A as minus 4.92 meters per second square, and we take x naught as zero. So to find the time taken for the car to come to a halt, we can use the equation V is equal to V naught plus AT, and if you put the right values, what we get is 0 is equal to 24.6 plus minus 4.92 times t or t is equal to 5 seconds. Now to find the total distance traveled, we use the equation v square is equal to v naught square plus 2a times x minus x naught and substituting the values what we get is 0 is equal to 24.6 square plus 2 times minus 4.92 into x minus 0 and we find x is equal to 61.5 meters. Okay, let us now derive the same equations using calculus and you will see how powerful calculus is when working around problems in motion. So we know that acceleration can be written as dv upon dt is equal to a and we can rewrite this as dv is equal to a times dt then taking the indefinite integral on both sides we get 
इंटीग्रल डी वी इज इक्वल टू ए इंटीग्रल डी टी और वी इज इक्वल टू ए टी प्लस सी एंड वी नीड टू पुट अ कॉन्स्टेंट सी बिकॉज इफ यू टेक डेरेवेटिव ऑफ वी विद रिस्पेक्ट टू टाइम इन दिस इक्वेजन यू विल गेट डी वी बाय डी टी इज इक्वल टू ए विद और विदाउट सी दैट इज we do not really know whether this equation in itself is complete or we need to add some constant so basically we need to establish the value of c it could be zero or something else that we will find now so to do so we know that at t equal to zero v is equal to v not then putting these values in the above equation what we get is v not is equal to c so we find that indeed there is a c value that is v not so the final equation we get is v is equal to v not plus at so let us now derive the second basic equation as follows we know that dx upon dt is equal to v or dx is equal to v times dt then taking indefinite integral on both sides we get integral dx is equal to integral v dt or taking v is equal to v not plus at we get integral of dx is equal to integral v not plus at dt which therefore means integral dx is equal to v not integral dt plus a integral t dt that gives us x is equal to v not t plus half ad square plus c so here again we need to establish the value of c and we know that at time t equal to 0 x is equal to x not then putting these values in this equation we find c is equal to x not so we can rewrite the above equation as x minus x not is equal to v not t plus half ad square so if you want to understand this section better you should go through this playlist which can really give a lot of depth to your understanding of this topic also if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and see you in the next video